welcome back to Mirror University. I'm your host, AJ, and today we're going to be talking about Geiger counters and radiation. Radiation surrounds us at all times. However, the radiation that we are exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis is considered non-ionizing radiation. That can be light, microwaves, radar, and also radio. But the kind of radiation we're gonna focus on today is the ionizing kind. This can be gamma rays or x-rays. For example, when you go to the doctor and you have x-rays done, that's why they wear a lead vest or suit over their body. Ionizing radiation can also come from nuclear weapons and explosives like dirty bombs that will spread radioactive particles all over the place. When we're exposed to radiation, the ionizing kind, this can produce something called radiation sickness. The problem with radiation sickness is that it bombards our cells with highly reactive photons. What that does is it increases mutations that take place inside of our body, which can lead to things like cancer or thyroid disease. In order to keep ourselves safe, there's a few units of measurement that we have to understand when dealing with ionizing radiation. First and foremost, that's the RAD, which is the radiation absorbed dose. When talking about the RAD, we have to understand it is measuring radiation absorbed into a material. In the context of this video though, that happens to be our body, which isn't so great, especially when you consider that one rad equals one entire gram of absorbed radioactive material, and it's not so rad. Another unit used to measure radiation is the sievert. For context, a room that is filled with some light and cameras, much like this one, is going to read something like 0.3 millisieverts. Something like your CT scan of your abdominal area is gonna range something more in the range of seven to 15 millisieverts. Now, 100 millisieverts, once we reach this range, we're looking at a risk of a cancer probability. One sievert is going to give us some short-term radiation sickness, and 10 sieverts is going to give us a lot of sickness and most likely death, which is something we're gonna to try to avoid. At high doses of radiation exposure, humans will begin to experience something called acute radiation sickness, the varying degrees of which can range from watery diarrhea, fatigue, and hair loss, all the way up to things like cataracts, which is the literal burning of your eyeballs from radiation. Uh, we can also develop things like thyroid cancer, leukemia, uh, lesions. Essentially, that radiation inside of us disrupts our cell structures, and for lack of a better term, we begin to melt inside. So, if at all possible, we would like to try to avoid that. Now, in order to prevent ourselves from being exposed to large amounts of radiation outside of normal levels, we want to employ something called a Geiger counter. Now, you're familiar with it even if you don't know that you are. They're extremely popular in media like HBO's Chernobyl or other disaster movies where someone is holding an innocuous box that is beeping or crackling loudly and everyone seems panicked about it. Well, they're panicked about it because the normal reading of a Geiger counter is five to 60 clicks a minute. Those clicks come from when ionizing pairs bond inside of the tube inside of the Geiger counter. It results in a click. So in popular media, that's showing you an awful lot of ionizing pairs and creating a pretty bad situation. So how do we protect ourselves from ionizing radiation? Well, the first step is to get a Geiger counter, which we happen to have here. So how do we use it though? Well, our Geiger counter quite simply has an on button on the bottom right here. Once we place it on, we're going to select our unit of measurement. Here, we have it set to sieverts and we are reading the standard dose of 0.03. So now that we're familiar with a Geiger counter, let's run through a scenario that we could potentially see in our lives. For example, we hear an explosion outside. We don't know what that was. We're gonna wanna retreat indoors immediately and we're gonna reach for a Geiger counter. We're gonna turn on our Geiger counter, make sure that it's set to a unit of measurement that we've discussed and leave it on the windowsill for about five minutes. Now, if we return to check that Geiger counter and it is at an elevated level, that means stay inside. Structures are fantastic at providing protection from radiation. We do not wanna continue outside. Additionally, we want to make sure that at this point we start the decontamination process because we could have potentially been exposed. That looks like removing your clothing, separating it from yourself and others. Uh, this clothing can be used later to determine how much of a dose you could have been exposed to. And then from that point, we're going to scrub vigorously 
with water and soap. And then we're gonna reclothe ourselves with a blanket and we're going to sit it out. So now that we've deconned and we are sitting and waiting, what are our next steps? Well, what we want to do is immediately reach for our potassium iodine tablets. Your thyroid is incredibly sensitive. It's also incredibly important. Ionizing radiation is absolutely devastating on the body, but it definitely wrecks the thyroid. And that's something that we desperately need to protect in a situation like this. So simply take one of these if you've had any fears of being exposed. That iodine is going to prevent your body from absorbing radioactive iodine, therefore protecting your thyroid. I don't know about you, but my thyroid has been really good to me and I'd like to keep it. Thanks for attending Mirror University with us today. Make sure to share, subscribe, and click that notification bell for more. Until next time, stay savvy, survivalists.